Hi, I'm Mike. As a cattle rancher in Northeast Wyoming, I work with cows every single day. You could call them the closest thing that I have to a coworker. I need them to trust me and I need to trust them to an extent. Today, we take a look at what it takes to earn that trust as we look at some cow physiology and psychology on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Welcome back to our Wyoming life. I was gonna to try to film outside, but today got away from me. So we're stuck inside the shop. But each video, we get a chance to take you along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. A journey that's taken us out of the corporate world and landed us here at our family ranch. Along with me came my wife, Erin, and eventually our kids, and a whole new understanding about where our food comes from and why it's important. Thanks for joining us on this journey. And thank you for subscribing and ensuring that we can keep spreading our message. We're all part of the ranch, each of us. And a huge part of that ranch is the cows that call this place home. We run about 150 cows on over 5,000 acres. The land here can support one cow and her calf for every 30 acres. That's called the stocking rate and it's based on the measurement of what one acre of land can produce to support the livestock living on it. Stocking rates are different everywhere you go and depend, they all depend on the soil, the amount of rain, the growing season, temperatures, elevation, and probably a bunch of other factors. These 150 cows can be worth as much as $10,000 a piece over their lifetimes based on the calves that they're gonna produce for the ranch. And each cow out here is part of our breeding herd and is just as important to the future of the ranch as anything else, including me. When we came here, I didn't know squat about cows, but over the last few years, I've had to take a crash course and I've learned a lot along the way. Our first winter here, all I did was feed the cows and the timing was perfect because I had an entire winter to get to know our herd. I fed them every single day. I got out, I moved around them, and most importantly, they got used to seeing me out with them. It's an odd feeling sometimes, knowing that an animal that weighs well over a thousand pounds is right up next to you. And she accepts you being there, mostly because she knows you're gonna give her food. Like a dog waiting its bowl, they're very much ready to eat each morning. And that's where our relationship begins, with food. You may have noticed that almost every time I'm out dealing with the cows, I'm wearing the exact same clothing. I always wear my hat unless the temperature or wind makes it impossible. And I'm usually wearing a black coat and that's for the cow's benefit as well as mine. Cows have been shown to recognize people. Studies show that although they can recognize faces, they do recognize colors and shapes much more easily. By wearing the same colors and my hat, I make an easily recognizable image, one that they associate with food and not a threat. But it doesn't make them cuddly like teddy bears, and they can behave in unpredictable fashions, even if there is food involved. When you work around them, you have to be conscious of behavior that may be an indication of stress and or anxiety. Cows do feel these emotions, and a really good indication of these emotions can start with the eyes. A general rule is the less eye white you see, the better they feel. A cow that's in a situation that makes her uncomfortable will open her eyes wider, perhaps to take in a better view, as deep down, cows are still prey animals and are very aware of the fight or flight reflex. It's cows in either of those situations that can become quickly dangerous. Cows see differently than humans. Cows can see around 300 degrees around them at any time. The most dangerous place to be around a cow is directly behind her because she can't see you at all. You're in her blind spot and cows get nervous when they can't see what's happening. Also, cows have slit shaped pupils and weak eye muscles and can't focus very quickly. They have poor depth perception because they have limited vertical vision of about 60 degrees compared to about 140 degrees for a human. A good example of this is a cow that's trying to figure out how far away from her you are. She'll lower her head, trying to gauge the distance, and it's not a good sign. If she's worried about how far you are from her, it means that she feels backed into a corner and will more than likely come out fighting. Cows do, however, have a great sense of smell, 
able to detect smells from miles away. Those smells, along with their eyesight, create social bonds between cows. They can recognize each other, and cows are able to have and make friendships and strong bonds with other cows. It's not uncommon to see the same cows together constantly. They've formed a bond based on trust and, more than likely, compatible personalities. Each cow out here has a personality of her own. Some are social butterflies, others are loners. Some like to slip under the radar, and others want attention and always seem to be front and center. There are some that have been called out by us based on how recognizable they are. Blonde Cow or 39 are good examples of this. They stick out like sore thumbs, and they have come to realize their place in our lives as we have learned theirs and ours. Other cows break the mold like Bambi, Mackenzie's cow. She was hand raised after her mom died during calving and she has a whole different outlook on life. She wants to be part of the action. She almost has a need to be around people rather than cows and it's not unusual that she's gonna be the first one you meet when you head out to the pasture to visit. But the big question is, are cows intelligent? Cows have been put through mazes, they've been tested extensively, and all those tests are usually based around food or something that makes a cow feel good. Cows may not be the smartest mammals, but they can show intelligence. They have personal bonds with people and other cows, and they can even hold a grudge. They can solve problems, they have a social order, and ask any cattle owner if they can sniff out an open gate. They also have a great memory, and they hope that you forget to close that gate another time. They probably wouldn't do well on their SATs, but heck, neither would I. And they can find what they need, food, water, and a safe place to sleep. And sometimes they even come to us looking for help. And that's the one thing that means more to me than anything else. I've had cows come to me looking for calves that they've lost or cows with a hurt hoof looking for relief. When it comes to cow psychology, there's so much more then may meet the eye. So next time you drive by a herd in a pasture alongside the road, you can not only see cows, you can see a society along with all the little idiosyncrasies that go along with it. Minus the homeowners association, luckily they don't have to deal with those. So when I look at a cow, I see a lot more than just a cow. I see the ranch, the future of the ranch. And I see cows ensuring that there's going to be a tomorrow for us, for our kids, and our message. They deserve every bit of my respect. Our breeding herd is in no danger, but yes, we do use these animals to our own ends. Because of that, they get respect, and we all work hard so that we can give them what they need. And our main goal and very first priority is to give them a good life that we're proud of and proud to give them. Sometimes it's not easy, but it's worth it. To all of us. And I hope that I'm not out of line by speaking for every single cattle producer that you're ever going to meet. Thanks for coming out today. My day is over. But there's still a lot more coming from the ranch. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications when a new video comes out. And if you'd like to visit the ranch in person this summer, check out the Ranch Roundup on our website, www.rwyomilife.com. Click on events and you can learn how you can come hang out with us for an entire day because we'd love to meet you and we hope you can make it. That's it. I'll be back on Tuesday as we once again tackle the project list. But until then, have a great week. And thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. One cow and calf per about 30 acres. Usually her that you're gonna meet first when you go out to the So it is when I look at a cow, I see a lot more than just a cow. That was loud.